So uh, recap my uh, real briefly recap my journey of the first part is learning. Um, get the technical training you need. Uh, I, I'm a strong advocate to go on to get your PhD. Uh, I never regretted that I uh, spent my PhD and did not um, sort of use it. Uh, but the reality is the, thing, the, the thought process, uh, the, same proce the same thought process of solving problems as well as uh, learning new subjects will always be with me, and that's what really I got out of my degree. And because uh, what you, you, what you want to think about is that your degree is not limiting, it's enabling. If, if you are a laser expert, doesn't mean you can become a biotech or you couldn't become a stockbroker, in a sense, an analyst or something. You can do anything you want. So it's an enabler rather than a limiter. You know, I'm a, only a laser, laser guy. I don't want to do anything else. And then the, taking the interest in business is very helpful. I, um, the professor uh, at Caltech said uh, to read Business Week, Forbes, Fortune, and Wall Street Journal, and Barron's, which I don't read anymore because I don't play the stock market. And I never stopped reading uh, it's since 1965. And in the beginning, it's very difficult, um, but it gets easier. But the point is, if you're in business, you try to correlate something you know here that's totally unrelated to apply to here, and that's what creativity is all about. So you really need to have both the depth, the technical training, as well as the breadth about everything else. And so uh, also learn from people. That's the easiest one. And then, of course, uh, angel investment, a lot of the names you may recognize. Um, and then the, um, uh, then the um, as a VC, we, uh, my, my uh, uh, result was a little bit better than the average VC. Out of the about 12 companies we invested today, five companies are still existing and doing well. And that by VC uh, record, that's uh, pretty good, but you know, I'm not happy with it. And now I spend most of my time helping young people, uh, people who want to start businesses. I will invest occasionally, but my main focus is trying to just do my thing. And I am writing occasionally for uh, Laser Focus and Photonic Spectra, which you may read. But uh, I'm also writing a book to summarize uh, some of the insights I learned. And I felt compelled to do it because I felt I spent so much effort learning from everybody, picking up from everywhere, thinking through issues that I want to write it down to benefit whoever else wants to do it. It may not be right by at least one data point. So um, I think the generalization from all of that is that you know, business experience is really useful, but it's not a necessary condition. You really can do it. But you've got to proceed with an open mind, intellectually listen to advice, and make wise choices and, uh, and, and uh, uh, tackle uh, whatever difficulty you might encounter. And then you really need a success to uh, launch an entrepreneurial career. And the likelihood is that if you have a modest objective, you're more likely to, to do it. Um, I, I have to say, uh, during the bubble, I, I have met young people with tremendously um, impressive technical record uh, joined three startup companies, one individual I know that came, came to me for advice, uh, literally could not find another job. And so it's not something you want to just do it by trial and error. You want to do it thoughtfully. And it takes really much more than a technical excellence to succeed in business. And if you want to sort of focus on technology only, that's fine. Uh, but you kind of preclude yourself from that uh, possibility uh, because if you want to be successful in business, you've got to have all of the ingredients, all the knowledge. You don't have to do it yourself. You can, you can hire people to do it, but unless you, 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 you know it, you understand it, you really can't manage it well. So um, basically, to start a business, you need the knowledge and ability, capability. And again, you don't have to know all yourself, but you've got to have the humility to get help if you don't really feel you know something. And then you have to execute. You, you really have to be good at what you do because uh, business is um, uh, not very forgiving. Uh, it's very competitive. Uh, only, the survive, uh, only the fittest survive. And then you have to have leadership. At the end of the day, it's really about how you build the organization of highly motivated, capable people to get the work, uh, the work done. 
So with that then, uh, resources, execution, and so forth, uh, one is learning, or, or I alluded to that earlier, which is both depth and breadth. Uh, depth alone uh, kind of put, put you in a, in a box, but the broadening enables you to learn new things and to uh, have new uh, op opportunities. And, you know, not only technology, but also business and relationship. Relationship is really important, and attitude is really important at the end of the day. And, um, and then resources, obviously, you're not talking about raising money at your stage, uh, but, uh, you know, your network and the, the, the things you know and your capability is what gives you resources. So you do really want to reach out and build a network, and there you also want depth and breadth. Depth, in a sense, you really need a few uh, buddies who you can confidence, whom you can brainstorm, and you can share your secrets, as well as people you know, you know, it's the shoulder slapping kind of a people, so you know who to turn to when you need the help. And then, of course, I think uh, uh, there's no better place to, uh, to be um, active uh, in professional societies like the OSA and in your local community. Uh, there you meet with people you will never meet in the hierarchy of your job, but you will meet people that you normally wouldn't meet, and that's how you can broaden your, your network and, and your knowledge base and get, to get, get a kind of a different perspective of things. And then the other thing I think is really important, uh, and, I, and I voice my strong objection uh, to people joining uh, startup companies that professors started, uh, I think that's a really a crime uh, because it's, uh, you're really kind of learning on the job and, and instead of going find a real job where you can pick up professional management skills. Well, I mean, if your professor's really good at managing his business, that's fine. But oftentimes it's by putting out fires, and that's not how you run a business. And so, so when, you, when you do look for a job, it's not about higher salary or less driving or whatever, but it's a really the learning opportunity to be able to take on projects. And I emphasize the project because a project means it's a, a wide variety of issues you have to deal with, and that's really what you do uh, in a business. So it's really a... Uh, uh, preamble to uh, your, you learning how to manage a big project, a business. And to be responsible because John Matthews didn't call somebody else, but he called me because he saw I was all these years a hardworking guy in the lab. I didn't know him very well uh, because we were different years. <clears throat> and then the other thing I think that's really useful on a job is to engage a mentor because, um, I'm not sure where I am, okay. Um, engage a mentor because uh, that's how you really sort of get behind the scene decisions and you, it really speeds up your learning when somebody can kind of coach you uh, along the way. And what you will find is that uh, your mentor usually has a finite life and the reason is because you learn you, you pretty soon catch up and so you really will find many, many mentors along your career.